Uh, good morning, my name is Lawrence Brown. I teach at Cape Cod Academy, and first of all, I want to thank Barnstable High School for, for putting these TED Talks on in the first place. This is a neat thing for the community, first year doing it. Uh, ripple effect. I want to talk to you about uh, the power of ripple. For a number of years, my school has been doing a, uh, a series of benefit coffee houses that have worked for us. And I want to talk to you about how we can ripple what we've learned from doing them into the community and how to ripple that out into the country at large. My hope in talking to you is that these TED Talks are going to go out and that people are going to see this and hear this and begin to do in their communities what has been happening here on Cape Cod already. Uh, first of all, this is a young people's event. You are a better generation than my own. Uh, I grew up in the 1960s, and my generation protested, made a lot of noise. A few very courageous people went south and worked with black people to register them to vote. Some of them got beat up. Some of them were killed for their efforts in doing it. But if you asked as a group how many people were clothed, how many people were fed, how many people were sheltered in the 1960s by young people, the answer would be almost none. Your generation donates every year one and a half billion hours of community service. That's extraordinary. That makes you the best generation so far. And, and that's who I want to talk to. I've been teaching for 38 years, and I've learned who my kids are, and I've learned to love them and respect them for what they can do. Uh, so you are, first of all, you're the good news. Now here's the question. If you're going to do all this work, you're going to do all this community service. What's the impact? What's the typical way that most young people try to raise funds to help some local organization? Bake sales, car wash. At the end of the day, you work hard, you count it up. $217, good day, $350. And you look at each other and you realize that's not a game-changing amount of money. That's not what is going to make a difference for a family or, or for a community, and you're looking for something else. So the question is, what turns the, the best bangs for the, the bucks for the hour? And the answer is performance art does. Performance art does. Now, here's why. First of all, people will pay to see someone from their family on a stage. People will pay if they support the cause. And, and people will pay if it's a good show particularly the latter. They will not only pay once if it's a good show, they'll come back year after year if it's a good show, and you can do that, and that's what I want to talk to you about. So first of all, in your schools, you probably do a talent show. I'm talking at Barnstable High School. I know that they do that. You guys do that here. Repurpose your school talent show to, to make it a charity event. And don't just do it once, do it once a season. Not once a year, once a season. You can have your performers pick who, the, who you help. Or even better, and this is something that Cape Cod Academy has been doing in the last year. We, uh, we challenge our student body to see which group will attend in the greatest number, which class will have the greatest percentage attendance, and they get to pick the charity. You invite various nonprofits locally to come and talk to you in, in, in morning meeting, explain what they do, who they serve, what their problems are, what they would do with the money if you got, if you got some for them. And then the student body is all invested, all connected, and all gets to pick. If you do that, you can raise $500 to $1,000 each time, and that's a really fantastic start. Or you do what we started doing eight years ago. We have a program called Shelter from the Storm. My kids at my school organize this thing, but this is Cape-wide and it involves all the schools in the district. We go searching for the best singers, best dancers, best musicians that we can find every year. And from here on in, you start getting a good show. You have a venue. You have places where performing artists know they can go and aspire to get to. Same thing as your local talent show or coffee house. You do that three times a year, and you have a stage. You have a venue where kids are going to come and perform. They can expect to have an opportunity to perform. Now they've got something to work for. They've got something to get good for. Uh, and that's going, you're going to see the level of performance get better and better and better every year that you do that. Now you do the same thing for the community. You say, we've got a place where your best singers and dancers and musicians can come. Um, and you pick who you're going to help. You publicize 
who you're going to help, and you make that part of it. The first concert we did eight years ago, uh, we did it for the local homeless shelter. Um, as the concert ended and the kids were all behind stage and they were high as a kite, it was a really good concert, um, someone from the NOAA came backstage and got the kids to quiet down for a minute and said, look, there will be people who are alive this time next year because of what you've done. You have fed everyone in the NOAA shelter for four months with the money you raised tonight. That's a game changer. That's impactful. That's making a difference. Talk about joy. Talk about heart. Now, you're, now we're talking. Now we can make a difference. Um, we raised in my little school $90,000 for charity with coffee houses and shelter in the last eight years. And this is a school with only 117 kids in the upper school. So if our little school can do that, your school can do more. And, and I'm hoping I'm talking to schools all over the country and that there are people all over the country who can begin to start thinking this way, doing this work. If a little school can raise $90,000 in eight years, this last year, because we keep, we're learning, we're getting better and better at this. We gave away, this little school gave away $27,000 to local nonprofit charity in the last year, in the last year. So first, you pick your need. Uh, who are you going to help? Uh, we have, over the years, been working with three, for three basic groups of people. Homelessness. On Cape Cod, we have lost 130 homeless have died in our woods and in our streets since they started counting. That's about 13 people a year on Cape Cod are dying of homelessness every year. This is a real urgent need. Um, and there are shelters and there are people who work with the homeless, nonprofits on Cape Cod, Duffy Health Center, Homeless Not Hopeless, Cape Cod Council of Churches, and these are all benef potential beneficiaries for activities that you do. Um, veterans. We are losing more veterans to suicide, more military personnel to suicide in the last several years than have died in combat every year. About 25% of America's homeless are vets, people who served their country in war. And now they're on the streets. Shame on us. Our kids wanted to help, and they started a program called uh, a, a Stand Down for Veterans on Cape Cod. We got 30 different agencies. Now, we didn't do this as a school. We, there are people on Cape, nonprofits on Cape, Duffy Health Center, the Veterans Outreach Center, who can organize all this stuff. You're going to help pay for it, is what you're going to do. We got 30 agencies onto our campus in the summertime. Free medical care, free blood screening, can't find a job, can't find a place to work, need blood screening, dental work, all of that for free, paid for by the kids who did the shelter concert that year. We did three of them in a row, and this program has won five congressional citations for the work. And if you're listening to this program, you can do the same. Now, here's where you need to have some committees. One, you need a publicity committee. You need some people to get the word out. And that's a particular area. You've got newspapers. You are news. If you're going to do a shelter concert, you're making news. So make sure the newsroom in your local paper knows that you're doing this. Also, you have an entertainment section in the paper. Make sure the entertainment folks really cover you. What you're hoping for is a cover shot on their Entertainment Weekly, or at least a full page inside, because again, this is something that kids are doing, kids are organizing it, and there are clear beneficiaries in the community. Um, radio, talk radio. Call the talk radio up. Tell them what you're about to do. Get on the air. Get your disc jockeys to talk about you. Get your local radio stations to interview you. We had someone this year, the day of our shelter concert in February, call me up at school and say, I heard your kids on the radio. I'd like to give you $2,000 tonight because I, I was impressed. The kids impressed me. Uh, as soon as possible, grown-ups like me should step back and let the kids step up. The more the kids do, the more newsworthy it is, the more impactful it is, the more they learn, and this is their concert. Uh, for the last couple of years, uh, I come up on stage, I thank everybody for coming, I sit in the front row, kids run the concert. Totally. I don't go back there until the show is completely over. They do this. 
and they do it incredibly well. That's really part of the story. Uh, so you've got newspapers, you've got network online, get a, get a web page up, get on your school web page, use the social media, work this thing. Get the people you're helping to, meet, to, to network for you too. You've got another committee putting the program together. Uh, think genres. The first one, a couple we did, was real heavy on boy bands. Uh, then we began to realize we needed a more spread. So come up with genres, look at dance. Ethnic dance, there's a girl from India on the screen. We had a dance troupe fly all the way from India to Cape Cod to perform in one of the shelter concerts because they'd heard about it and they wanted to be involved. They wanted to learn how to do it so they could take this concept back to India and start doing it there. Um, ballet, Broadway, hip hop, rock bands. There's some good bands on Cape, good high school bands, good jazz bands too. Uh, classical, we almost had the, the whole, we started off with quartets. We were gonna have the entire youth orchestra at our last concert, but we had blizzards on Cape Cod week after week after week, and their rehearsals were snowed out, snowed out, snowed out, so we missed them. We're gonna get the, we're gonna get the whole orchestra in next, next year, and that's a big draw. Uh, pop vocalists, I don't know why, there's usually more female vocalists than male vocalists at this age, so we've got a big depth uh, of good female vocalists on Cape, including opera. So you've got your entertainment group, you've got your media group, and fundraising is the last one. And here you're probably gonna need some adult help. If you fill a decent sized venue, you will probably make somewhere between four and $6,000. We don't charge too much money, $10 for adults, $5 for kids. This is a family thing. You don't want the ticket price to be so high that somebody says, okay, mom, dad, two kids, 50 bucks. Keep it, in, keep it inexpensive so people can come. Fill your theater, make this thing available to people. Then you go out and look for your donors, your business people, your corporate donors, uh, private individuals. We call them godparent donors. If they're willing to give, write a check for $1,000 or more, they're a godparent donor. And we have more and more of them coming in every year. And what brings them in? The cause and the fact that kids are doing it. People heard so much stuff about kids these days. Well, that's my message. Kids these days are doing stuff like this. So that's my message. The, the photographs you're looking at are all performers from shelter concerts. Most of them are taken by students. You get kids involved at every level in this thing. Um, if you need to rent an auditorium, my suggestion is you don't use a high school auditorium. No school should have home field advantage for this. We use a community college auditorium, terrific staff, have neutral, a neutral ground, a neutral place where everybody can come and feel like they own it together. And that's my story and I'm sticking to it. We're in the process of setting up a website right now. Um, until that is up, if you see this program, you can go to my school website, capecodacademy.org, go to CCA Life, and, uh, and go from there to CCA Has Heart, and we have a program that's up there on the screen that will walk you through how to do a shelter concert. You can email me at Lawrence Brown, Cape Cod Academy, and we've got kids, and, and, and we'll help you. Uh, this is, this is, a, is a game changer. This is a way you can really, really help, and I hope you'll do it. Thank you for listening, and God bless you.